Hello and welcome to What the Flick. We're going to harmonize our entire review for you guys. <laughs> Acapella. Can mm -hmm. we do that? Yeah. On three. On the, yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, yes, let's. <laughs> you know, you have to. I, I think. I think like knowing about any kind of music and knowing this pop '90s ish music is very, very helpful to enjoying it. There's definitely there's a niche, and yeah, it's for everybody, is it not? Absolutely. Pitch perfect. I'm Christy Alonzo, Matt Ben. Ben has seen this movie. Ergo, Woo! he's going to describe it to us. Ben, sure ben went and saw the uh, acapella college comedy. If that's so. not a mark of the end times, totally. Right. <laughs> Tell us what's uh, about. So it's based on a book by Mickey Rapkin, and, uh, who wrote about uh, acapella singers at Oregon, at uh, Virginia, and at Tufts University. Oh, really? Were That's you right. in the group at Tufts? I was not a Beelzebub. Is that what they're called? That's what the uh, male acapella group at Tufts is called. The female, their rivals at Tufts, very much the theme of this movie. Uh, is the Jackson Jills because the Tufts female group. college oh is Jackson? Oh and that's, and come on, that's a good name. <laughs> the Jackson Jills. I thought you were going to say the Beals of Boobs. Yeah, that would have been good too. Uh, were these the cool kids on campus, by the way? Did they get laid a lot? I was so not cool that I wasn't even familiar with who the cool kids on campus <laughs> were. Didn't have a map. I was not. I was not privy to that information. So uh, this is about uh, a cappella singers at a made-up university. I think it's called Barden. 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 Barden University. Uh, about the female group and the male group and the stoner group. And anyway, acapella is apparently huge right now. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, leading up sort of like the cheer movies, leading up to sort of the big competition. But uh, Anna Kendrick uh, uh, stars as a sort of, uh, she's pulled in, she's not interested, she doesn't want any part of this. I think she's flat out awesome. She and is. I remember early on in the uh, Twilight movies thinking this is horrible and unwatchable, but I love Bella's friend. <laughs> She's fantastic. So anyway, so it's, so it's about the rivalry here between the acapella groups and it leads to the national competition and it's a good college movie and there's a lot of singing and you're joyful and going like this throughout the entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> here it is. Getting paid is a forte each and every day to play away. I can't get her out of my mind. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I found myself, so, so afterwards I really did, I found myself sort of, I, I was thinking, I think I was like, I think I've been smiling for 90 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't really stop smiling. It, it's fun, it's sort of, it really didn't really seem to have much of a lull and like, I felt like the one moment where I thought, okay, now this is, it's getting a little dull and a little, uh, very, uh, becoming a typical romance is of course, there's a guy in the male group who wants Anna Kendrick. But then, like within a minute and a half, something every refreshing. Every guy in the male group. Yeah. Totally yeah. Wants but then, uh, within a second, it uh, it switched and it was fun again. Well, you have to have the, the contrived conflict that yes. keeps them apart, right? And right. Which was super contrived. Right. But I actually thought that I, I kind of bought into. It. I mean, I, I felt like that it, they, that it, it wasn't just sort of phoned in. Like they actually sort of give her some character reasons for not being open to a relationship that. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. No, I agree. That's, and that's why. I mean, it was contrived in that you knew it was coming. But well, that's sure, it. yeah. But, I mean, but that said, gonna, her, uh, and they kind of acknowledge yeah, it a little you. bit in the script, right? Like, they talk about, like, movie endings and, you know, sure. artificially happy endings. And there's a little bit of a, you know, it's a little bit subversive at times. Mm -hmm. what, what, what this movie does really well is that it, in the, in the tradition of a lot of great American movie comedies, is there's this really great ensemble. So it's not just that there's like one funny guy and you know, then the crazy, the people around him. Like everybody almost in this movie is pretty funny. I mean, you've got Rebel Wilson, you've got- Who almost uh, steals the movie. She pretty well, much does. And uh, Hannah Mae Dong, I believe is Hannah her May name. Hannah Mae Lee, <laughs> who, Hannah Mae Lee, is that one I see her name is? I'm forgetting, I, but- uh, She's the, hilarious. The, who play, who play, yeah, exactly, <laughs> the silent girl, she, uh, for me, kind of stole the in movie. In a singing group. Just, just, yes. The idea of that alone is very, very clever. But then when, when she does talk, what she says is so evil <laughs> wrong. Yeah. It, that's one of the running jokes in it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, so there's, just, there's a lot of different sort of, you can kind of cut away and some nutty thing will happen from somebody else. And you know, uh, and then the music choices I think are really kind of inspired, whether they're brilliant or terrible, right. they're all kind of great. It's you know? a very eclectic mix of everything from like, No Diggity by Black Street, which actually is like a pivotal plot point, that yeah. song, to like Ace of Bass, which has been stuck in my head for days and, Ugh, and I want to shoot myself now, to like Rihanna and uh, hey, Mickey. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> right. and uh, Simple Minds and the Bangles. Like it's every possible genre that they make in these acapella you know, songs. I, I, don't, I didn't know because I didn't. I, I didn't pay attention to music 
ever. Um, and so I didn't know a lot of these songs, but it make it irrelevant. It make, like I was thinking, I wish I knew them because I bet that added a l layer of flavor to this movie yes. that I if didn't you do have. Know them, but yeah. it, right, but it didn't matter. It's, it's still fun. Like it makes you yeah. you're, you're into it. What is I, so clever? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, good. Like, what is so clever here is that. It's cheeky and it's snarky, but it makes you fall in love with the very thing that they are making fun of. Because yes. they're so joyous about it, and right. they take there's such an pride in it. There's an infectious joy to totally. it. Totally. It's, it's so much fun. As much as they're goofing on it, there's obviously an affection there. And I felt like this succeeds actually where A Mighty Wind fails a little bit, as much as I like that movie. Because yeah. A Mighty Wind, like they love the folk singers too much to really skewer them in that mm -hmm. movie. Whereas this one, there's just enough distance that I think that they can make people look kind of shitty, but they don't really like throw them under the bus the way it happens in A Mighty Wind. Like the meanness of it, right. like the, the guy group is called the Troublemakers, right. and they're clearly douches, no, but no. they can sing too. And this so movie kind of made me feel that. like Mean Girls, and then I went into yeah. this thinking it's going to be just some kind of goofball movie that I wasn't really, you know, I'd heard that you'd really liked it, but yeah. I was like, eh, I don't know. You're like, oh, don't this, trust Christy. Like, oh. oh. <laughs> what do women know? Right. <laughs> um, and I loved this movie. Yeah. And I know that there's going to be a lot of guys out there that are going to say, oh, I don't want to see this. This is a movie about girls singing in college. And those people are fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Go see this movie because it's fucking great. There is your blurb, yeah. Um, Anna Kendrick is adorable. She's you the always best. like her. And, and I, I've been a fan of her since camp, so it's nice to see her sing in a movie. Yeah, because yeah. you know um, she can. And the fun irony here is that if you know her background, and she has this Broadway background. Yeah. She never, she doesn't really sing in movies, and so the fact that she's reluctant and says, oh, I can't sing, is a fun little <laughs> cute irony they but play all, with. She's symbolic of everybody else in the movie because mm -hmm. they seem like in, whether it's the, it's competition, high, high school movies, or just regular high school movies, everybody seems like they're set up to be a cliche, like the guys are douches, but it turns out they have a little depth. They're not total mm -hmm. douches. Like you could see in a different world where all but one of them you might be might be friends right, with, sure. and you know, and then the good guy who, who Skyler, Skyler Aston play, plays him, and then as soon as he he joins the group, he doesn't. He's not corrupted by it. No. He still stays as a genuine guy. And then the other women, I really loved the redhead, and I thought Brittany Snow. Brittany yeah. Snow. Yeah. Yeah. She was great. Not and, usually a redhead. Well, and there's and, a lot of funny stuff going on, like a lot of depth, like even things that I think people may not notice. Like there's scenes whenever, for instance, they're in that quad in that park, and there's somebody talking. I don't know if you guys caught this. Like early on in the movie, there's like ten people all holding oh. hands, running around in a circle. Oh, is that right? Right. Is that they, the stoner group? That was the no. stoner group. I <laughs> thought. And, <laughs> and they just like they don't ever acknowledge them in the film. It's just every time you know they're having, they're doing this these this back and forth between one of the characters, and every time they cut to Anna Kendrick, there's these people just holding hands and running around. <laughs> and then in a later scene in the park again, then they're all just running in a circle again. <laughs> Well, yeah, and, and, and think about like I mean you know acapella groups is the sort of thing that like was sort of an easy laugh like I remember there was a Gilmore right. Girls episode where they go visit the Yale campus and they're literally like fleeing one acapella <laughs> group after another that keeps popping up and like by the end of this movie you're like wow acapella groups I, you know they're kind of cool I yeah. like it I, I, by the time you're done at Tufts University you're like I wish uh, I could have joined the wish I joined the Beelzebub I mean I can't I could have yeah I mean can whatever you sing? no not at all <laughs> Don't get muddled out yeah. Yeah, exactly. We should mention really Details. fast, you, you compare this to A Mighty Wind, there is definitely a Christopher Guest yeah. mockumentary kind of element to it with John Michael Higgins and Elizabeth Banks. Right. Mm. As yeah. the, the commentators. And she, the broadcast she's, commentators. she optioned the book. That's yeah, she's, why. she's right. an executive she producer. Husband. And yeah. those scenes are hilarious. Those yeah. bits that they have in the booth, talk, you know, doing Because they start saying just the most despicable stuff, but they never drop that cable right. TV announcer right. voice. <laughs> and it feels like it was ad libbed. It's very unpredictable. Probably, yeah. And I think a lot of the Rebel Wilson's lines, I think, also. That's pretty much the way everyone in my family. Talks. <laughs> yeah. This is true. Let's do numbers. Please. Coming up from 1937. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's right. Ben, what's your number, please? I give it a nine. <laughs> and you? I husband. also give it a nine. And you, Alonzo? I'm going to go nine. I was, you know, I, you've, you've, you've convinced you me. I was not being generous enough. You don't have to recap. I'm making it super easy for you, Christy. <laughs> Our average is a nine. Because I'm also giving it a nine. Hooray <laughs> oh, right for math. Okay. Um, so this is, we're a lot higher on this than the tomato meter right. is. But the tomato meter is not an average. It's just a measure of people that like the movie. Yes, but it's a, there are some haters out there, some assholes. I can't. Uh, I, think the, I think the crowd who we saw it with, which was a regular crowd, brought in civilians. Uh, civilians. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I think they they uh, I, they, they were having they the, wanted to applaud yeah. at various moments during the movie. True. Yeah. So yes, the Tomato Land says 71, but you can ignore them and listen to us because we have our right. finger on the pulse. It's a crowd pleaser. It's hugely crowd pleasing. Okay, bye. 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 See? <laughs> you can sing. Bye. Oh